Hey everyone, Kimchika here. Uh, PAX is over, so this is part of a series on all of my recap on the indie games I got to experience at PAX, so be sure to check in the description box below for additional links on all of the PAX coverage that I've done. Uh, but this video is focusing on the mix. The Mix is hands down one of my favorite events of PAX West and of most d game conventions. They actually attend quite a few uh, around the world even. And what I love about this event in particular is that you can enjoy games that are both on the PAX show floor as well as games that aren't featured on the PAX show floor. And the quality for all of these games is just outstanding. It's always in a really great setting. I love getting a chance to talk to the devs, to other people who are interested in indie games, and of course, getting a chance to play them, as well as enjoy some food and drinks. Of course, you're not here to listen to me reminisce about the event itself. You're here to find the hidden gem indie games that I've discovered along the way. So of course, we've talked about titles that were at the mix, like Boyfriend Dungeon, uh, Joggernauts, and The World Next Door, which are all wonderful games and featured in other PAX videos. But I wanted to highlight the five titles that you may not have heard about in other public applications or may have heard just a little bit about and that I think deserve some extra love. So here we go into the top five hidden, hidden gem indie games that I saw at the Mix 2018. Mosaic. Developed by Krillbright Studios, the team that brought you Among the Sleep, another outstanding indie game, Mosaic is another beautifully done game that will make you stop and think about how you live your life. Not necessarily on the epic scale, but in the most mundane moments. Do you choose to take the scenic route? Do you take a moment to explore an alley? Do you look up from your phone to take in the sights and sounds around you? Mosaic is a title that'll blend the surreal with the familiar, and the gray atmosphere contrasted with moments of beauty, should you find them, will have you catching your breath just a little bit. Black Future 88. This game is frantic and chaotic and challenging and so much fun to try out. I love the unabashed love that the developer has for the 80s, cyberpunk, and synthpunk, and after playing this game, I feel like I've caught a little bit of that bug as well. In this bleak future where the population stopped keeping track of time once 88 hits, you've got 18 minutes to climb a dangerous tower and destroy its eccentric owner and architect. Don't worry, the clock doesn't always tick down the whole time you're playing. Sometimes there are rooms where time is stopped and you'll have all manners of curses and buffs to help and hinder your progression. Balance is the key. Black Future 88 is tentatively planned for a 2018 release. Dark. Fun fact, at the mix there's always a ballot providing the audience and a team of selected industry judges with the opportunity to select their favorite game of the night, and Dark was the winner of Best of the Mix at PAX West 2018. This unique art style of this title is hard to forget, but even more interesting is the slow build that the developer takes when tackling the concept of horror and lucid dreaming. While there's the occasional jump scare, the scary part about this game is the potential for things to happen, the tension, that psychological element. Lloyd is a young boy who realizes he's trapped within a dream, well, more accurately, trapped within a nightmare. You must use stealth and puzzle-solving skills to avoid being caught by the monsters of your mind, which you have no chance of beating, by the way, so don't even try. The Missing, J.J. Macfield and the Island of Memories. Not a whole lot of detail is being shared about The Missing, but this is a game that immediately caught my eye and I can't wait to play more. The Missing is a new side-scrolling action-adventure game from Suri that will play with the ideas of death, life, and utilizing inversion in t of time and space. It's going to be gruesome, but it'll also have some deeper concepts for you to consider. When asked about the story, Suri says it alludes to a missing person, someone who's lost, or even something lost. Perhaps it's your loved one or a place you belong. 
but if you ever feel lost in your everyday life, The Missing is for someone like you. Fortunately, we don't have to wait long to get a copy of The Missing in our possession because it's coming out in 2018. Why are you here? Grab a star. This title was a total surprise to me and one of my favorite surprise finds of PAX West. Gravistar is a sci-fi fantasy RPG that draws from fighting games to create a more modern experience. You play as Baird, a young orphan who discovers he has a much greater role to play in saving the world to using the power of stars. I appreciated the balance that Studio Atma was able to bring to the game, in particular drawing from and including classic JRPG tropes and nostalgic easter eggs, while also switching up just enough that this experience still felt new. Battles work more like fighting game rounds where you battle using button combos in a turn-based fashion. The visuals are bright and fun to look at, the soundtrack is already sounding quite epic, and I can't wait to see more. Sign up on their website for more info as the release date and platforms are currently not yet announced. So those were the five hidden gems that caught my eye while at the mix among the other numerous indie games that were a lot of fun. It really was a great year for indie games, both at the mix and at PAX West in the main show floor. There are too many good games to count. So if you've got any titles that you really love that you know were there or were at PAX West, please let me know and put them in the comments below. And if any of these titles interest you, I'd love to hear from you what about them interest you, if you think you're going to pick them up. And, uh, and, and all the fun details. So if you guys like this channel, please consider subscribing. I cover all things indie games, whether it's indie events like this, uh, first impressions, reviews, and occasionally even some let's plays. And if you enjoy hanging out with me live on stream, I go live Monday through Thursday at twitch.tv slash kimchika at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And through my work, I also work as a host and producer of the Utomic live streams and those happen on Monday and Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So you've got multiple chancel, chancels? You've got multiple chances to catch me online if you'd like to say hi uh, live. So thank you so much. I hope you guys are finding lots of indie games to play and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.